long-awaited review into how Jimmy Savile routinely abused young children at the BBC will be published today. Leaked sections of Dame Janet Smith's report reveal the entertainer committed his crimes in virtually every corner of the corporation's premises. Sky's Michelle Clifford has been looking at the scale of the scandal and the three-and-a-half-year task to uncover the truth. He maintained the veneer of fun and respectability even as he carried out sexual assaults, daring to grope and fondle young women as the cameras were trained on him. That's me there. Sylvia Edwards is the blonde teenager beside Jimmy Savile in that 1970s recording of Top of the Pops. She still remembers the unwelcome presence of his hands upon her. She recalls, too, the reaction of BBC staff. He had his hand underneath my backside and was fiddling with his fingers. Um, and I told, and he wouldn't take them away. Every time I tried to sit down, he, they were still there. And I kept trying to tell him to move them, but he just wouldn't have it. I told the man afterwards, and he told me to basically get lost, because that's just Jimmy Savile. That incident took place inside Television Centre, where we now know Savile abused others. But a major review is expected to conclude he carried out sexual assaults at virtually every BBC site he worked at. Leaks from the review pointed to a BBC with untouchable stars, allowed to operate above the law, and alarmingly suggested it's possible another child abuser could be lurking in the BBC even today. Whether BBC staff and, more importantly, managers routinely turned a blind eye to Savile's behaviour is a question at the heart of the review into his time at the BBC. Did deference to celebrity allow a prolific abuser to get away with it for years? And if so, could senior managers have been immune from an atmosphere where star quality was everything? Many who've worked for the broadcaster over the years argue not. One BBC veteran gave evidence to the review about how when she was a young Radio 1 DJ in the 1980s, a colleague routinely grabbed her breasts while she was on air. She took her complaints to her bosses. I told management about a colleague coming into the studio and abusing me while I was on the air. Yeah, And I was, so I was asked, oh, what's up with you, Liz? Don't you like it? Are you a lesbian? Nobody can convince me that people were in a position to change the culture, we're blind to that culture. Which begs the question as to whether the review by former appeal court judge Dame Janet Smith will point fingers, apportion blame, name and shame. Not just over Savile, but the presenter Stuart Hall, who abused youngsters in Manchester. If she doesn't, lawyers for the victim say they will be furious. I think they will regard it as a very expensive whitewash, that they have been through three and a half years of suffering, that they've gone to give their evidence in very painful circumstances purely uh, to have the truth established, and that uh, that won't have been the case. A dark chapter is how the now BBC Director General described Savile's tenure. It's about being a bit odd on the life. And the review commissioned by the corporation itself is designed to establish the facts about the past and learn lessons for the future. The victims say the first lesson should be accountability. Michelle Clifford, Sky News. Meanwhile, one of Britain's best-known radio DJs, Tony Blackburn, has confirmed he's been sacked by the BBC after five decades of broadcasting. He's pledged to take legal action against the corporation, which he claims is making him a scapegoat. Blackburn has released a Twitter statement saying... This week, two days before the publication of the Dame Janet Smith report, the BBC informed me that all relationships I had with them were being terminated with immediate effect. I am told that the decision was taken personally by the Director General. Quite naturally, I am devastated. Now, our reporter, Sean Dilley, is here. Sean, thanks for joining us again. Now, Blackburn is being quite categorical mm. in his denial of any wrongdoing. He is. We're talking about allegations that pertain to uh, a 45-year-old incident back in 1971, and we'll refer to Tony Blackburn's own statement, where he discusses a young girl, Claire, who was 15, uh, who made apparent allegations in a diary that a number of celebrities had seduced her, including Tony Blackburn. Uh, he's been very categorical in saying that's absolutely not the case. Now, why has he been axed by the BBC now? Well, according to the BBC, there is no comment they are making at this point 
point they've declined to comment. Tony Blackburn, however, says that he's not suggested in any way, shape or form in Dane Janet's report, which will be out obviously at 10 o'clock uh, later today, details here on Sky News, uh, that the issue is that his version of events do not tally up with the BBC's version of events. That's the reason he says they're destroying his career uh, and his reputation. And in particular, what he suggests the, the main issue appears to be is that the BBC believe that he was interviewed by two senior people at the BBC, one a senior member of staff, another external barrister. Now that's something which Tony Blackburn says in no way happened in the context that they had uh, suggested. So he is putting it across that the issue and the reason for the disruption uh, to his career, to his reputation, is that he, um, his version not tallying is that they're trying, as he puts it, to do a whitewash and a cover-up. That's his allegation. He firmly denies anything. Now he says he's looking at legal uh, action against the corporation. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Donald Trump's campaign for the Republican presidential nomination is building momentum following his third straight victory in the Nevada caucuses. It's testament to his broad appeal, but have his rivals run out of time to stop him in his tracks? Well, Sky's Sarah Houston is at the touchscreen. Well, it may seem impossible.